Amen. How is everybody doing this morning? All right, all right. This is the nonprofit summit. Of course, you paid for it, so you know exactly what this is. Uh, how many of y'all came yesterday? Y'all enjoying so far? Yeah. Awesome. I had a chance to come and share last year, and for some crazy reason, they thought it'd be all right to bring me back again this year. Yeah. I'm like, they crazy. They <laughs> bring me back again, but you know, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Um, somebody tell me or guess, what do you think my favorite thing to do every single day? What is my favorite thing to do? Somebody, just guess. There's no right or wrong answer. Lift weights. Lift weights. No, lift forks. Forks, maybe. <laughs> weights? No, I'm joking. Yeah, that's one thing I like to do. That's not a wrong answer. Anybody else? Talk to people. Talk to people. Okay, we're in, we're in that realm. There's a certain word I'm looking for, though. Encourage. 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 He said, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Let me go, let me go in the black bag real quick. Hey, y'all. I like to encourage people. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's me. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So I like to encourage people every single day. Um, give yourselves a round of applause. Go ahead. Give me, I know I know we're supposed to, you know, kind of be. That was, why y'all stop? <laughs> yeah, the time. Who has the time for all the time? Yeah. No, give yourselves a round of applause. Love on yourself. Love on yourself. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. take one for the team, all right? So, you know, you're supposed to celebrate yourself every day. That's the first thing I have on this uh, handout. Do you celebrate your, go ahead. Can I get a handout? Can you get a handout? Please. You didn't get a handout? No, sir. Let me give you a handout. Yes, sir. Thank y'all. Thank you. If you didn't get a handout, let me know. Are you in it? My man. There you go. Thanks, buddy. I gave him mine. You gave him yours? Boy, you must be from the Lord. Oh, yeah. Got it, right? So that's the first thing we're going to talk about. I, I wanted you guys to give yourself a round of applause because you got to celebrate yourself every single day. So that's the first question. It says, do you celebrate yourself daily, yes or no? Once again, there's no right or wrong answers. Um, and of course, we're in different spaces in our lives. But just ask yourself that question. Do I, when I get up, do I celebrate myself? You know, yes or no? So you can mark it. You don't have to share your answer. Um, next is, what is your morning routine? I'm a guy that likes to make you think. So think about what your morning routine is. Go ahead right now, take maybe a minute, two minutes. I'm not really gonna time it like y'all time that flat. <laughs> but just think about what you do for your morning routine every day. Think about it. And then if anybody wants to share, go ahead. Think about your morning routine. When you get up out there, well, as soon as your pinky toe touch the, what are you doing? Hey, dog. Anybody want to share? Mm -hmm. We got two, three. Go ahead. Uh, we'll go on the line. You go first, my brother. I manifest today, so I thank God for everything that He's done. Thank you for allowing me to wake up, meet people. Thank you for being in your presence. Thank you for bringing kingdom minded people my way. Thank you for the successful success, success that I'm gonna have today. I just manifest today. Yeah. Uh, you want to come up here and speak? No, 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 no. no. This, this is all in here. No, this <laughs> manifest today. It's all in. That's beautiful. Yeah. Manifest in the day. What about you, sir? 10 minutes of gratefulness, Ten. thankfulness. Oh, yeah. 15 minutes in the Word. And then I spent about 30 minutes praying. Woo, woo. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Yup. And then I hit the gym. Hey, you all right. We got to talk. <laughs> we got to talk. I need to start. I just hit the gym. Mm -hmm. Usually about five in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. We're on the same way. Oh, yeah. What about you, ma'am? The first thing I do is just to be until we hit the ground. I'm right at the coffee shop, so I ain't had enough morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, seriously, um, every morning I, I pray. I personally do. I pray and I surrender myself. I surrender. Let me get out of myself mm -hmm. um, to be able to be of service to others. I meditate. That's all that matters. Can't nobody fault you. Y'all give them a round of applause yeah. for sharing that. Um, it goes down on the on the handout and it says if you don't have a good routine, I can suggest these things. Of course, um, I pray, as a lot of y'all mentioned. Um, I get some coffee, I need that coffee. 
If I don't drink coffee by 8.30, I had a worse headache. That's crazy. Man. Yeah, this caffeine just it murders me. Um, I read, uh, but most importantly, as my good friend said, I declare my day, and I say that I'm expecting for great things to happen. If you don't listen to nothing else that they have said, or nothing else that I say, you have to expect every day that great things are gonna happen. Before this session started, we were talking, and I said, I say every day that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard all that God has planned for me. I say it every day. And then I end up in rooms like this. Like, I, I, just, I just got on a board with a nonprofit two years ago, Michelle. And now I'm presenting on a nonprofit summit. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. I ain't gonna preach. I promise you I ain't gonna preach. <laughs> All right, so let's keep going now. What do you think of when you hear the word expectancy? Take a, take a minute or so and think about that. What do you think of when you hear the word expectancy? And let me warn y'all too so you don't laugh at me. There may be a couple typos on here. I was so upset with myself because I'm like, I don't type this out and made it look somewhat presentable. And then I got reading and I'm like, why didn't you spell check? <laughs> So if you see a misspelled word, just put a cross through it or get you some white out of something and, you know, y'all know what to do. But think about what, what do you think of when you hear the word expectancy? Anybody want to share? Expectancy. Remember what I just said, you have to expect for great things to happen in your life every single day, even, even though sometimes they don't, right? Because sometimes our life is crashing down every day. Things, it's like when it rains, it pours. This thing is happening. That thing is happening. But what do you think of when you hear the word expectancy? Anybody? Something's coming. Something's coming. I like that. Something's coming. I think to myself, no matter what, uh, today is going to be the best day of my life. Sometimes we go to bed with trouble and issues and hardship, trial, tribulation, and then we wake up with the same thing. But it's a choice that you make. Do I want to wake up, even though I'm going through this, do I still want to continue on in another day dragging this same old luggage from yesterday? Mm -hmm. It's a choice that you make in every aspect of your life. So think about that. Moving right along. Where are you taking your expectancy today? Think about that. So it don't just stay at the house, right? It's always like your purse or your your wallet or your Bible, it, it has to go somewhere, right? It, it can't just stay in one place. So take a minute or so, or 30 seconds or so, and think about where you're taking your expectancy, right? We, we already know now that we, we have to expect great things in our life. We already know uh, of an idea of what we think expectancy is. Now let's say to ourselves, where am I taking this expectancy? Think about that. I told you I want to make y'all think. I want to get your mind, your juices flowing, your mind moving, right? Think about it. Once again, no right or wrong answers. Any, anybody want to share? To others. To others. Okay. Everywhere. You see my paper, did you? <laughs> Everywhere. I think that there's uh, opportunities in every interaction. So when I go start my day, your word again, manifest, manifesting great things for the day. So my lady back here, she hit the nail on the head because that's what I, you know, I had to write my own answers out too, you know, to make sure I'm doing, I know what I'm doing, right? Everywhere. You're taking expectancy everywhere. Say it with me. Everywhere. everywhere. You gotta take it everywhere. Whether you're at the school with your kids, on your job, at church, you're taking it everywhere. You can't leave it at home. It's important. It's almost like your vitamins. You need to take that expectancy everywhere you go. Expecting that things are going to manifest. It. Expecting that things are going to happen. Right? This is a big one right here. Do you have faith? I'm pretty sure I can answer that question for y'all. If you, if you already know that I got to expect great things, but I still put it on here anyway because, you know, some people don't have faith. You know? So 
answer that question to yourself. You don't have to answer it out loud. Do you have faith? Yes or no? And at any point in time, y'all have any questions or a comment, please raise your hand. It's not a dictatorship. This is, we're open, we're free, right? Do you have faith? That sometimes in life, our faith gets down. We lose faith due to certain circumstances and situations, right? So ask yourself that question, do I have faith? Yes or no? And then I want you to rate your faith on a scale of one to 10. It says faith the size of a mustard seed. I didn't know I would be up here and start preaching faith. <laughs> faith the size of a mustard seed, so that could be one. Or you can have crazy faith like me. It could be a 10. I'm crazy. The things, the normal things that people think are impossible, I think they're possible because who I serve. <laughs> so think about that. That's a 10. Like, I mean, any, whatever the wildest, craziest thing you that you're thinking of that people are saying cannot happen, but you already know who you serve, that's a 10, right? That's that expectancy. You know what? No matter what, I'm still expecting for God to move and to work in my life in all areas. Scale of one to ten. Who, who's got crazy faith? You got crazy faith? Tell me why you have crazy faith. Because I've seen it. You've seen it? Yeah. You've seen it happen? Yeah. What he's done in the past is bring me where I am. See? Mm -hmm. uh, the, old, the old saints, um, uh, where I grew up at, they said uh, he brought me from a mighty long way. They used to say it just like that. The law, the law, L-A-W-D, <laughs> has brought me from a mighty long way. And that's the truth. Anybody else? How, how, what makes your faith crazy? What makes your faith crazy? Because I think about, think about that song, For Every Mountain, You Brought Me Over. Yeah. For every trial, we see me through. They see it. So, if you, if you came from somewhere, if you've been through something, it wasn't you being there. It wasn't you. So, right. Think about working with that. It did. Yeah. Gotta have crazy. That's it. I think I, that's what a lot of people struggle with. Yeah. yeah. Nobody said. Nobody said perfect faith. Yeah. You gonna be perfect? Cause sometimes in in that very split second or that moment, it is gonna be some doubt that sometimes creep in. But you gotta redirect it real fast. I had a college coach that said you gotta have a short memory. Mm -hmm. I would mess up on a play, and then I would carry that over into the rest of the game, and it would screw the rest of the game up for me. He, he pulled me to the side and said, son, you got to have a short memory. So it's just like when doubt comes in, you got to have a short memory with doubt. And you got to make sure that you remember, no, I got crazy faith. I got faith. My faith is on 10, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the introduction to what I'm getting to. Um, daily expectation, right? So it says, number one, I'm a guy of points. I'm a guy of topics. Um, once again, I'd like to make you think. Number one, be consistent in your daily expectation, right? So think about where you are right now within your nonprofit or within your life or whatever it is that you have going on. And then ask yourself, am I being consistent with that? I tell you, because some people only have faith or some people are only consistent with a Wednesday and a Sunday. You know what I'm saying? But you have to be consistent every day. If you're not consistent every day, Things tend to not manifest. Things tend to not happen. How many days of the week is it? I mean, I ain't smart as I ain't dumb to see it. How many days of the week is it? Seven. It's seven days a week. So, so how am I only expecting for things to happen uh, <coughs> two or three days out of the week? I'm just saying. Whatever you put your hands to consistently, will eventually become a great thing. I don't care what nobody has told you. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what your current situation looks like. Because sometimes the situation that we see in front of us, we allow that to determine where we're going, and that's not the case. The situation that's in front of you is meant to build you and shape you and mold you to where you're getting ready to go. So think about that. Whatever you put, whatever you put your hands to, I didn't say some things. Whatever <coughs> you put your hands to, it'll eventually happen if you keep if you if you're consistent at it. Seven days a week at it, right? 24 hours at it, right? 
every moment, every second, every minute of it, you being consistent with it. Think about you building a house, right? That's a process, am I right? It's a process. You can't build a house on the day. Unless you're building a tiny house. And you got about five, five of y'all out there. But I'm talking about a big house. It's a process. Foundation and <coughs> all of the above. Y'all know about it. Think about that. But if you keep hammering away at it, it's going to eventually come. But you got to have consistency. And you got to you got to transfer transfer that over not only into your life but into your job, into your nonprofits, right? Consistency, consistency. If you can be consistent, that's when great things come, right? That's when great things come. I go down to say uh, you're being looked up to, right? You may think that nobody's watching you. You may think that nobody's paying attention. You may that you may think that nobody's listening. But you have people within your organization. Am I right, Michelle? You have people who are in your community, your peers, your, your children, your spouse. Everybody is looking up to you. They're looking for that consistency. They become consistent based off of uh, um, you being consistent. That's it, because they're looking up to you. I promise you, you, you guys are making an impact wherever you are in your life right now. Don't think that I'm not doing enough. Don't say that to yourself. That's a lie. That's a lie from the enemy. You're doing more than enough. And it's going to continue to get better for you in your life. You're being looked up to. Because you're being consistent. Like, like my lady said right here, I've seen where he's brought me from. So if I can make it through that, the least I can do is be consistent with within my nonprofit or within my life or what, whatever it is I'm doing, I can be consistent in that, right? And I also say you're being looked up to, and I've had a lot of opportunities in my life that have come from people who have studied me, right? They've sat back and watched me. They were trying to see if I was gonna be consistent or not, right? It never fails, I meet somebody and I'm thinking, they, they have no idea about who I am. And I go up to them, hey, I'm, and they say, I know who you are. I'm like, wait a minute, you got a secret hidden camera or something? What's going on? And then they'll proceed to tell me of how they have watched me over a period of time and how they may admire me or whatever the case may be. And at that moment, that's when those opportunities come because I stay consistent. If you're being consistent within your business, or your nonprofit, you might not see it up front, the support or the help. But you being consistent every single day, that's gonna allow people to donate money to you, give you opportunities, invite you into different places that you never thought you'd be, off of your consistency. Off of your consistency. We're halfway done, y'all. Number two, maximize your time. Maximize your time. Even in your downtime, you gotta ask yourself, what am I doing to improve what I'm a part of? So take, a, take 30 seconds or so, write down something that you, that you can be doing in your downtime that can help you in your personal life, but also help you within your nonprofit or your job. It's all right for y'all so far. Everything good? Y'all quiet. I like noise. I like noise. Y'all make me think I ain't doing a good job. Y'all over here being quiet. Think about it. Anybody want to share? Say what? You're doing a great job. Oh, thanks. Thank, uh, how you say your name? Janelyn. I would have jacked that all over. I would have right. said Jack around or something. <laughs> Janelyn, Jan that's, that's unique. Thank you. Anybody want to share? How, how are you maximizing your time? Anybody want to share? Sorry if you don't. Trying to um, reading, research, educate myself, be more knowledgeable of what I do in my role. Right. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Anybody else? Cool. Uh, one thing I put down is networking. Michelle, 
tell you, everywhere we go, I, I don't meet a stranger. <laughs> Michelle is, is the executive director of Harmony House, by the way. I give it to Michelle. Harmony House, domestic violence shelter. We're, we're both a part of a, a, an amazing organization um, that's based out of LaGrange, Georgia. Um, but networking is crazy. LaGrange, stop. Let us grow. I ride my, I roll my bike up here. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Is Willie Ray down the road though? What, 30 minutes? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Give us a hand. Okay. But we have stuff, but y'all good stuff. Yeah, y'all got, yeah, y'all got good stuff. Yeah, yeah. We got hammer down. You know, we pull folks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but networking. Uh, I said you never know who knows who. So watch who you talking to. Be be attentive to who you talking to. Now. You might even be an uh, entertainer than an angel. I don't know. But you never know who knows who. Networking. That's one. If you, if you don't write down anything else when it comes to maximizing time, networking. My guy right here, we outside just talking. I got a bracelet now and everything. We just talking. I don't know who he's connected to. He doesn't know Jay. He doesn't know who I'm connected to. I don't know who he's connected to. But if we keep talking, they might tell the woman they come out of it. Man, I know such and such that can help you with this. I know such and such that can help you with that. Help you get along the way. Some things you've been praying about, some things you've been manifesting can come through conversation of other people. I can't tell you how many times I've just I've just thought something. I ain't even said it out loud, I ain't said it in prayer, but just thinking about it. And then all of a sudden I walk into my day because I was expecting for things to happen. And then God just he, he'll send somebody right in my hand, boom. And, I, and my mind is blown away because I'm like, wait a minute, I ain't even opened up my mouth to say nothing about this. <laughs> but you still bring it in my path. Expectancy, going back to that, manifesting. You gotta be, you gotta be on, uh, in the forefront of your mind. So networking, that could be one thing. Um, make sure that you write down your ideas or things that you want to do. I want you right now to write down one idea. Think about something that you have been wanting to do in your life period or within your nonprofit or organization. Think about it. Think about one thing. Just write down one thing. Write down one thing. And I wanted to let you guys know that your ideas are not crazy. I said this last week, I had a chance to, to share a message last week and it was called Dream On. And I talked about how Joseph was a dreamer, right? If any of y'all are Bible scholars, I'm not a scholar, I just know a few stories here and there, right? But Joseph had a dream. But then he had people like his brother and, and other people who, oh, there goes that dreamer, right? And so people will talk you out of a lot of things that you're trying to do in your life. Things that you feel strongly about, things that you feel in your heart. And just because they don't see the vision, they'll, they'll try to bless you. They'll try to talk you out of it. So write down an idea, and I wanted to let you know once again that your ideas are not crazy. They're not stupid. Just because they don't make sense to this person over here does not mean they don't make sense and they're never going to happen. Because it's going back to that what? That manifestation. It's going back to that consistency, right? Within your nonprofit, within your business, within your life, right? Somebody share an idea. Anybody got an idea? What's one What's one thing that that you're thinking about? Buying a new guitar. Buying a new guitar. So you you play instruments too? I've been dreaming, man. Yeah. I'll have one. I'm trying to finagle a way to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, legally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> you had to look in your eyes. Like, I'll do anything. <laughs> I see that look at you. <laughs> Legally. Yeah. So so we got a guitar. Anybody else? <laughs> if you don't have anything, that's all right. I'm just trying to, you know, trying to jog y'all. Get you out your comfort zone. Right? Make sure you keep that idea. And once you've written that idea, what else do you have to do? Don't look at your paper. Believe it. What else do you have to do? Expect. Expect it. What else do you have to do? Do it. Do it. Do it. Like you said, just do it, right? 
Do it. I said, uh, execute it. Last year, I've always had faith. But last year, I had this little bit of notebook. And something told me, start writing your ideas down in this notebook. And not only did I start writing those ideas down, I said, we're going to take it a step further, Quay. We're going to start doing everything that's in this notebook. And I know that sounds crazy because you're like, man, I ain't going to be able to do everything that I wrote down. Yes, you can. If you want to. Can't nobody tell you any differently. It's your life. <laughs> so once I started writing it down, I started executing. And that's what you got to do. Man, you want that guitar. You can get that guitar. Wow. Legally. <laughs> <laughs> you can get it. Going back to that crazy faith. See, we, we just tied everything in together. We braided. We weaving in and out. Going back to that crazy faith. Going back to that manifestation. Going back to that expectancy. Whatever it is you write down, your idea or your initiative for your life, for your nonprofit, start to execute that. Sometimes we're on, we on the outside looking in thinking that something is so hard. And sometimes it might not even be that challenging. But how would you know if you haven't taken a step towards it? You're sitting back here contemplating, listening to lies, listening to BS, you know, whatever it is you're doing, and, and you're not even moving. You got to step towards that. Because once you start taking steps, guess what God, guess, guess what God is going to do? Oh, they really, they ain't that there. They're committed. They're committed to their nonprofit. They're committed to their goals. They're committed to their dreams. They're committed to their purpose, right? They're, manif yeah, they're, they're manifesting. They're expecting. That's when he starts blessing you. And it ain't got to be a, a big old step, right? It can, I mean, it can be like this. Little steps, small steps. When we think about steps, we're thinking about, let me, let me skip some processes. And it don't work like that, right? Go ahead. You have to believe it to achieve it. Come on now. Who said that? Charles Mark? No, that was me. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. <laughs> you gotta believe it to me. Hey, it's cliche. We've heard that, you know, growing up, but it's the truth. You gotta believe it to achieve it. Don't worry about how long it's gonna take. But just know if I keep on at it. If I have a, a, a mentality of execution, it's going to happen. I've got the other tools in the toolkit. Now i got to execute. Right? Get around some like-minded people. Somebody said that earlier. Somebody mentioned that earlier. Getting around some like-minded people. You're trying to get somewhere, you can't be around somebody that's negative every day. Because you're going to be negative. I don't like being around negative people. Y'all like being around negative people? I'm the nicest guy you ever knew, but I, I, I might want to just smack somebody. Like, <laughs> smack, the, smack some positivity into them. <laughs> Seriously. Because, man, we, we, we've been so blessed and fortunate. I keep going back to you. He's brought us so far in his life through many situations. Jay, am I right? Yeah, that's right. He done brought us so far. But we up here being negative. Somebody ain't got no food in their refrigerator, but we being negative. And we got food in our refrigerator. Somebody having to ride the bus or walk to work every day or whatever, and we got a car. Somebody standing on a box or under a bridge, and we got a roof over our head. Somebody has a, a felony or struggling to get a good, decent job to provide for their family, but we go to a job that's good paying with benefits every day. Come on now. Think about it. Think about it now. Get around some like-minded people. Get around some like-minded people. And I want you to think about this next. What is your strongest asset that you bring to your team or to your family or whatever it is that you're a part of? As a matter of fact, what is your strongest asset? Think about that, right? Write that down. Take about 30 seconds or so and write that down. And I'm getting ready to wrap it up, y'all. Sorry for boring y'all. Sorry for boring y'all. I'm just speaking from the heart. I told you this is not your typical nonprofit speech. This is encouragement, right? That's what I like to do every day. 
I like to encourage people. I'll use them. You know what that just made me think? I, I didn't tell y'all. So you know we did the little claw machine out there, right? What y'all think this is? Lotion. Uh, shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, <laughs> why y'all laughing at that point? Why y'all laughing at that Yeah. I can use shampoo, can I? <laughs> Put in the beard. Okay. See? Y'all laughing. <laughs> I can use this shampoo if I want to. I can imagine I got some hair up here. I can manifest some hair. Clothes. <laughs> what is your strongest asset? Anybody want to share it? Wake y'all up a little bit. What's your strongest asset? Are you upbeat? What's, what's your mouth? The gift of gab, I guess. The gift of gab, yeah. We all need that. I used to have that. I don't know what happened. I still got it. Don't play with my emotions like that. Man. Okay? Anybody else? Hard head, big heart. Hard head, big heart. We all need one of those. Hard head, big heart. That's it. Determination. Determination. That's your biggest asset. You're determined. Yeah, it is. You said that. I didn't say that. You said that. Yeah. Believe that fully. Believe that fully. Anybody else? I said upbeat. I'm upbeat. I love coffee, but I don't need coffee to make me hype. I wake up like this. My wife said, you get on my nerves. <laughs> because you, <laughs> do you have a bad, do you know how many, <laughs> you know how many people have asked me, do you ever have a bad day? Yeah. yeah, when I get home, I don't bring that into the world. I don't bring that to y'all. It's already enough polluted air out there. I'm bringing you fresh air. I don't want to bring you more pollutedness. Did I say that right? I was on it. That's my word of the day. Pollutedness. You can take that to the bank. You can't mention it, baby. I'm bringing you fresh air. So I'm, I'm going to be upbeat. Think about what you're bringing into your organization or to the lives of others every day. I know what Michelle is bringing. I can pick on you for today. For me and everything. But she's bringing love every day. She's bringing her up every day. There's plenty of times to where she's getting up, getting up out of her bed and answering a call, answering a, answering a crisis, or canceling her own personal plans to help somebody else. That's love. So think about what your biggest asset is, right? Getting down to the end of y'all. You and your team have to see the same vision. Or you and whoever it is you're working with, y'all have to see the same vision. Y'all have to expect the same way. Manifest the same way. Right? Or, or, or else it's not going to work. Am I right? Yeah. You start dealing with some people who are not like-minded, like you, it just doesn't work. Everybody's not going to have your same asset or the same thing that you possess. But you still got to match up vision-wise. I get so upset sometimes because I know me. I mean, I'll take a bullet for anybody. I know that sounds crazy, right? Like you're like, how do you take a bullet for somebody? I probably would. I probably wouldn't try to save anybody's life. I don't have to know you. And sometimes I get upset and my wife has she has to reel me back in and she says, You gotta remember everybody doesn't have your heart. Right? And sometimes we get frustrated, like, man, why won't this person support my business? Or why won't this this person support me with this or that? They may not have your heart. Unless you know that they're not like-minded like you. If you would do it for them, they wouldn't do it for you. That's a problem. Get around some like-minded people. Make sure y'all are seeing the same vision, right? You also have to be ambitious all the time, right? How many, how many athletes, former athletes? What, what did you, what did you play? I swam. You swam? Mm -hmm. You're a good one. <laughs> Anybody else? What you do, Jay? Football, boxing. You look like a boxer. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I wouldn't grab you. <laughs> well, you might have to. No. <laughs> <laughs> you get to. I know that's right. Anybody else? Track and cheer. Track and cheer. Okay. Softball. Softball. 
That, yeah, you look like a hoop. <laughs> I see you. I see you late. All right. I know they got a gym in these places. I know they got a gym somewhere. Um, so think about think about it in an athletic room, right? You want to be the best. You want to be the best. You want to go the extra mile every time. You want to put your foot on the gas, right? It's time to go. Whether it's swimming or boxing, whatever it is, hey, you got to come and see me. Your opponent or whoever it is against you, you know what? You got to come through me. Ain't no victory until you come through me. Ambitious. Even when the odds are stacked against you. I don't have a favorite college team. I know that. I feel like it's a Bulldog fan there somewhere. Yes. Look, she, <laughs> she ain't said nothing the whole time. She, yes. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. She barking and stuff. But you almost made me lose my top. I don't, you good. I don't have a favorite college team because I like being the underdog. I like underdogs. I like when people count me out. I like when people are always counting the other team out. Because what usually happens is that underdog shows the world I belong, I belong here just as much as the familiar face that belongs here. Because I'm ambitious about my business, about my goals. I'm, I'm expecting, manifesting within my life, okay? Last but not least, you and your team have to hold it together in the tough times. Or you just, a, and just as an individual have to hold it together in tough times. You gotta hold it together. You're gonna go through things in life. Am I right? That's right. I keep coming back to you, ma'am. How many things have you been through and you didn't think that you were gonna make it out of? Tons. How many things have you been through? Tons. And I think the most amazing thing ever about us, especially within this room, we don't look like what we've been through. Do we? Why do you think that is? We don't look like what we've been through. We have it together. But it is going back to these core principles and values that I've been talking about and harping on the whole time. We expect it for things to get better, and now they are. We didn't say perfect. But we said better than where we were. We manifested, you know what? My life is going to be better. My business is going to be better. My dot, 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 you fill in the blank. It's going to be better. Right? Holding on through the tough times. It ain't always going to be easy. Sometimes I get a little frustrated or scared if, if nothing, if there's no opposition going on with me. I'm like, wait a minute now. It's too quiet around right here. Not saying that I want bad things or challenges to happen, but you know what? It makes me better. It makes me better. Everything I've ever been through in my life. Some things I'm like, how in the world am I even going to get through this, Lord? Only you. <laughs> Nobody but you. But you got to hold it together in the tough times, too. Because it's going to get tough. No secret. No secret at all. So let me go back to the top. Daily expectations. I've had people ask, how, how do you stay this way all the time? And I said, it's, it's easier than you think, right? I got this thing called the focus. Y'all know about uh, horse racing, right? Who knows about horse racing? I don't know too much about it, but I do know this much. They have blinders on, right? What are the blinders meant to do? So you got these blinders, and when it's time to go, all they can see is the finish line. And that's what I do within myself. I'm not looking to the left or the right. I don't even want to see left or right. I want to see what's ahead of me. I want to see my future. I want to see where it is I'm going. Even though sometimes you don't have no direction. God knows, but it's up to you to just look ahead. Not behind you, because behind you, now I'm not saying, if it's something good, yeah, look behind you, right? If it's something that you, that, that help you get to where you're going, look behind you. But if it's negative, 
And the things don't mean you know what they're going to look like. Look ahead. Don't race backwards. You got you to go forward. And that's what keeps me going. I look forward. Regardless of what's going on. Regardless of when trash and, and debris gets in my eyes. I still look forward. And that's what you have to do. Expect it. Daily. Like my God said, manifest. Daily. Everything else will take care of itself. Nobody's asking y'all to be perfect within your mouth, know, right? I know I ain't perfect. Michelle, am I perfect? Stay close. <laughs> Cooperate with me. <laughs> no, no, no. There might be one day we got on top of you. No, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to be perfect, but hey, give, give your honest effort. Expect for great things to happen. Manifest. Great things, even if it sounds crazy. Some stuff I say it sounds crazy to me. I'm like, did I just say that? That's from God. Every good thing comes from Him. But some stuff, sometimes some stuff comes in your mind and you're like, wait a minute, you sure that for me? He put it there, I promise you, He did. Now you gotta execute, you gotta walk towards that, you gotta stay focused on that, right? So that's my message to y'all today. Expect David. For things to happen in your life and whatever it is that you're a part of. Everything else will take care of itself. Do I have any questions? Concerns? Prayer requests? <laughs> we all need prayer. Amen. Anybody got any comments? Nice work. Nice work? Yeah, very good. Thank you. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs>